G'day folks. I'm back in the in the creeks again. Uh, we're pretty much uh, fishing uh, all began for me uh, chasing uh, Australian natives, especially Australian bass in this tight country. And um, I'm pretty excited about today actually coming. It's been about four four years since I've actually had the opportunity to do this um, due to family uh, reasons. So I'd like to start off before you even do this. You need to be prepared. Um, it, it's a really good idea, um, one, to bring some air guard. Uh, there's lots of mosquitoes here, but more importantly is being safe um, and, and being able to do this type of fishing um, in confidence. Uh, so please tell a friend, loved one, before you go exactly what, what part of the actual river that you're going to be fishing just in case something happens. And believe me, it can happen. Things can go wrong pretty pretty damn quickly um, the other thing is uh, making sure you've got a small first aid kit especially uh, compression bandages um, for snake bites etc et um, enough water uh, to keep you going through the time that you're actually going to be out here on the, on the creek all that um, should get you home safely um, but today um, I'm fishing with a seven foot Akuma spin reel rated about three to six kilos. Um, that's matched with the uh, Akuma uh, Inspira 30 and it's spooled with 10 pound platypus uh, pulse uh, times four braid. Uh, and then I've got a 15 pound leader, stealth leader um, attached to that, that main line. My lure of choice um, today is a uh, 1 8 uh, Vortex TT spinnerbait in uh, Olive Chertreuse. Uh, um, I believe it just, yeah, I've had so much luck with this type of the colour and the type of um, spinnerbait. It's fine gauge uh, hook, just penetrates the, the fish's mouth really easily and um, yeah, just that hookup rate just improves. Uh, you still got the flash and vibration uh, with your willow blade. But the colour is like almost represents a frog, which is pretty much, yeah, um, quite in, in, endemic through here. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to take me about 500 metres to get actually on to the, to the creek here. Um, I'm at a, a junction. Um, the other thing I'd like to mention too is some of these creeks uh, are tidal, so if you've got a, a low tide at the mouth of this river, that which might be you know 30 odd k kilometres away, um, it could be a high tide here and, and vice versa. So that's just something to consider as as well. I've had a considerable about amount of rain recently. The water clarity isn't isn't the best. Um, it's very murky, but I'm still very confident. Got an overcast day. Um, we're in dead set on, on uh, midday, so we're right fishing in the middle of the day. Uh, I did check the, the barometric pressure before I left, which was very favourable, around that uh, 1,018 to 1,020. So anyway, um, yeah, first time back on the creek for a very long time. Here we go. It's amazing uh, how how much uh, hasn't changed, I suppose, uh, over the four years since I've been in this creek. And it's all coming back to me now of um, where all the deep holes are, um, yeah, where to cross the river, etc. So um, 
yeah, it's it's all coming back. I'm in a real deep hole now um, with a lot of um, structure midstream, and also on the other side there, there's a there's a lot of overhanging um, shrubbery, and including um, a lamandra, which is a, a, a native grass, I suppose, endemic to this region, and bass love hiding underneath it. Uh, yeah, so um, I'm going to persist here a little bit um, and and really work this hole over. Uh, yeah, and that means um, working the lure, the upper column, and then when I feel like I've done done that enough, I'll just keep on going lower and lower and lower in that water column until I get enough confidence to, to really get down low on that bottom where a lot of that structure is, and hopefully yeah, some bass will be on the bottom there, hiding, willing to yeah, take my lure. So anyway, we'll give it a shot. Shine. Oh no! Right, so I'm fishing downstream here pretty much, and what I want to target is all these lay down trees that are here. Bass would be seeking a bit of refuge underneath there. Got a big lay down log across here, and they could be out here underneath a, a branch with a big lay down just in some calmer water, what's called an eddy, just waiting for anything to come downstream. They just shoot out of their, their uh, that slack water and just am ambush their prey. So um, I'll have a bit of a flick around here. Very, very shallow. Good thing about this 1.8 Vortex spinner bait is you can fish it as fast or as, as slowly as you want. Normally if there's a bass in here, they'll hit it pretty much straight away. So um, I find it's no point in just, just keep on peppering a hole. If they're there, they're there. If they're not, they're not. Just practicing too. You need to be really accurate in your casting. We'll have one more cast in here and then move on. Beauty about this spinner bait too, if you hit a lay down log or anything. Pretty much snag proof, it'll just go straight over over those snags underneath the water. Anyway, no luck in that hole. So we'll um, keep on persisting downstream. Fish on. There you go. Only a little bass. Nonetheless, it's a fish, and that's what we came for. There you go. Come over and give you a look at it. So there you go, it's only a small, small bass. Um, I've caught them out of this system well over 50 centimetres, so hence the reason why I fish with a pretty heavy, heavy leader. But um, at the end of the day, that's what we've come for. And it was just persisting. Got a little bit of a uh, flow coming down, downstream. 
and there's a pressure point at the end of this pond here and uh, this this little little fellow was uh, just on the other side of that that down, um, structure downstream in that ambush um, in that area just down and out of that flow so job done Just want to show you exactly where I caught that fish. Um, so over here to uh, to my right, um, I've got a small little um, lot of rapids coming down here. So that's bringing all the food source and everything to the to the fish. And then I've got a, a big deep hole over here to my left, which I call um, like there's a lot of pressure points, and that's really really good uh, fishing in there as well because what you'll end up finding is where that set of rapids runs back and hits a bank a lot of fish will be back back into that um, bank like such and waiting for all all, all those um, morsels coming down to feed on so they're pretty much ducked up underneath there on a, on a pressure point what I call a pressure point then over here pretty much there's a there's a log over here where I was actually standing on and I was casting my lure back this way set of rapids there and I brought it past this bank here on the other side of that bank there is just completely and utter dead still, still water so those fish are there waiting here in an ambush point so anything that coming past there they're waiting in that slack water and they come straight out and, and hit a bait fish or whatever that's coming down downstream so this here is just some really gnarly snags in here I'm just going to pick up the camera now and just just give you a bit of a look so again there's a set of rapids this is where I caught the fish just before in that slack water and you got all this current coming down into this big pond here which I call as a like, big pressure pressure point so you can imagine fish bass all up on that bank over there just all facing the current it's still really, really slack water, and they'll be in there waiting for any any bait fish coming downstream. Again, there's plenty of structure over here where they can hide. I haven't even I haven't even fished over there. I can guarantee there'll be a couple of fish over here. So this is a really, really good water hole. So if you see anything like this, you need to stop. Plan plan your attack and strategically cast in different areas where you know where those fish might be hiding.